Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, the aluminum section is shorter than the copper section. However, the, the heat still has to travel through both, and we're trying to find the total heat carried through the connection between the heat source and the heat sink that are different by 100 centigrade degrees. The cross-sectional area is still the same. And notice we still have the information from the previous videos where we had a 1.2 meter section of copper loan carrying a heat kind of carrying heat at 32.08 watts and if it was aluminum alone at a 1.2 meter section it would carry heat at 17.08 watts or joules per second so we have our easy method to figure out the heat conducted across that path by using the following equation that the power dissipated or the heat dissipated across the connection is going to be equal to the product P1 or P of the copper times, now since the section of aluminum is half the section that it was when we calculated its value, we have to multiply that times two, two times the power carried by the aluminum, if it was a section that was 1.2 meters long, divided by the power carried as it was copper plus twice the power carried for the aluminum section. So that should work just as well as it did in the previous video, but now we multiply the aluminum uh, heat conducted or the heat conducted by the aluminum section by two because the section is only half as long as it was before. All right, let's plug in the numbers and see what we get. 32.08 times twice the aluminum section because that's a multiplication. That would be two times 17.08 divided by the sum of 32.08 plus 2 times 17.08 and let's see what we get and uh, so we have 32.08 times 2 times 17.08 that's the numerator divided by 32.08 plus 2 times 17.08 equals and we get 16.54 watts. So that's the heat conducted in this particular situation. Now again, we're going to calculate it using the traditional method. We're going to calculate the junction temperature between the two sections of copper and aluminum. And again, we realize that the heat transfer to the copper section must equal the heat transfer to the aluminum section. So these two equations, this equation must be correct. And when we plug in the values, we get the following. We get the conductivity constant of copper times the cross-sectional area of copper times the difference in the temperature in the copper section divided by the length of the copper section is equal to, on the other side, we get K of aluminum, cross-sectional area of aluminum, delta T of aluminum, and the length of the aluminum section. Now again, we realize that the cross-sectional area of both is the same, so we can cancel that out. The length is not the same, but the length of the copper section is twice the length of the aluminum section. So we can go two times the length of the aluminum section, which means that these two now cancel out. And let's see what else do we have. I think that's all we can cancel. So now we go ahead and plug in the numbers. We get 385. And then we can take the two and multiply it up here. So we have the delta T. And then that is equal to twice 205, because we moved the 2 over here, times the delta T of aluminum, which can be written as 100, minus the delta T of the copper. Now, notice that if this is the delta T of the copper, of course, and notice that whatever this number is, this must be 100 minus that, and that's where this came from. So now we, now we have... Uh, only one unknown, the, the difference in the temperature to the copper section, so let's solve for that. We're simplifying this, we get 385 times the delta T of the copper equals 2 times that, that would be, uh, that would be 410 times 100, that would be 41,000. Minus, that's 410 times that, that would be 410 times delta T of the copper. And now we move this across over here because now we only have one unknown. That's 410 add to that, that's 795 delta T of the copper is equal to 41,000, which allows us to get, calculate 
the difference in the temperature or the change in the temperature across the copper section. So we have 41,000 divided by 795, and we get 51.57 degrees. So that's the difference, the change, which means the junction temperature is 100 minus that. 100 minus that would give us 48.43 degrees centigrade. That would be, of course, degrees, or centigrade degrees is the better way of writing it. There we go. Now that we have the junction temperature, we can now calculate the heat coming across the copper bar, which is the same as what goes across the aluminum bar. So we have the dQ dt through the copper section, which is equal to K, which is 385, times the cross-sectional area in square meters, and times the difference in the temperature, which is 51 point five seven and divide that by the length of the copper section which in this case is 1.2 so this is equal to and of course it should be exactly the same as what we got over there so times 0.385 divided by 1.2 equals and 16.55 well I'm off by one decimal point that's just a round off error 55 five watts so you can see that we did get the same result except for the small round off error and so both methods work, and you can see that you can do this in the traditional method, finding the junction temperature and then the heat through the conducting path, or if you already have these results right here, you can do this very nice slick way. And that's how it's done.